What's up, guys? I'm Riven. And I'm Talos. We're the Studley Boys. Welcome back to another episode of the Studley News Network. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the Nintendo Mario Showcase, and we're also going to cover the Tokyo Game Show 2020 lineup. And lastly, we're going to cover the Madden 2021 controversy. Timestamps and links to all the articles we're going to cover in this video will be down in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and sub. Uh, if you guys want to watch us game, we do stream on Twitch every Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. An occasional stream here and there on other days. Be sure to check us out. Link in the description. With that being said, let's get on with the news. Let's do it. All right, guys, rolling into the first bit of articles um, just earlier today. At the recording of this video, this morning was the Nintendo Direct where it basically is the 35th anniversary of Mario. Everything today during the Nintendo Direct was all Mario theme base. So let's roll into it. I can't believe Mar it's been 35 years though. Like it, you don't even think about that, but yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, pretty, pretty old company, but uh, it's a testament to Nintendo and Mario as a brand that, that they're still around, you know? Okay, so moving into the first uh, part of this article here, a new novelty handheld. Coming November 13, 2020 is the new Game & Watch style handheld loaded with the original Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels Mario themed edition of the classic Game & Watch title ball. Yeah, so in terms of this handheld, I believe it's like $50. Um, I think it's also like limited release or something like that. I believe so. I, I want to say it's limited. Yeah, so what do you think? Um, It's tough because like... like as a resale value, if you keep it as like a collector's item and never use it, then maybe you can resell for a profit if it's limited, like you were saying. Um, as an investor, maybe it's something to pick up. But uh, if you're thinking about buying it just for the playable, like just playing the game, I personally don't think it'd be worth it for that, that price tag. Uh, there, there's plenty of other alternative sources to play those games. Um, honestly, I, I, I didn't grow up on Super Mario Brothers. Uh, one and two. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm more of a Super Mario World guy, and uh, I'm not really like too big on these games. So that's probably the only reason I, why I wouldn't buy it. But yeah, it's like it's like a nice little you know novelty thing that you can put in your collection. You know, and it's, it's only it's only fifty bucks, so it's it's not too bad. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. The one thing, the one the one thing that kind of bothers me is they probably could have put more games on it. Yeah, they really you know could. I mean? They really could. Maybe if they had put like the entire uh, All Stars lineup, you know, with Super Mario Brother, uh, Super Mario World, um, and then I think maybe Mario Kart, maybe. Yeah, Mario Kart, or I'm talking. Well, I'm mainly talking about the uh, the the platforming games. But um, mm. if they put yes. the entire um, you know, Super Mario All Stars with uh, Super Mario World, I think I would be I would be tempted to buy it, even if it was like a little bit more expensive. The one thing that's, that's kind of fascinating with this one is uh there is a is it is is it single player only or can you can you play with like a two player ex experience? I think it's only single player. I okay. The the um the original games didn't support a, a co op, so I I don't see why why it would. All right, so moving into the next part, the long rumored 3D Mario collection. So the big this, one. Yeah. So according to this article. Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy will be coming to the Switch with higher resolutions and optimized for the Nintendo Switch. The compilation is called the Super Mario 3D All-Stars and will be sold for September 18th until March 31st, 2021. Yes, there is an end date. Yes, that's weird. So again, Yeah, that, that is super weird. Why would they end it? Why? Yeah, so again, there's um, it's like um, it's a limited run type thing. Uh, I don't know if you played Super Mario 64 on the, um, was, it, was it the 3DS or 2DS? No, I haven't played the, the, I guess, was that updated as well? Yeah, I think it was like updated. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming it's just going to be like a better, more, even more updated version of that game. Yeah, but uh, obviously like uh, uh, for those that know, that know, like obviously for me and Riven, we're big fans of the Super Mario 64 days. Um, but I, I guess like the same with many other people out there is a very passionate game that many people uh, are like in love with so the fact that they're actually coming out and porting it re or revamping it um that's a, that's a big deal for us let's talk about the limited run for it why do you think they they chose that though why do you think they they decided to do that 
Maybe so that way they they can uh, maintain the price of the game. Uh, so that way they're uh, that way. It, because I, I, as a business perspective, if they would have kept kept that game on uh, after that end date, then they have like almost no choice but to discount it. Um, and maybe I don't know. Maybe they're trying to maximize profits and hype for it. That's what I think. Hmm. You think it's possible that they'll they'll take it out and then maybe in the future they'll also they'll, they'll put it back in or something like that because I don't know I don't, Reju- I don't re- rejuvenate that hype I don't know yeah I don't see the reason but it's sort of like I don't know I mean because I I, just, I don't see like a, a reason for doing for doing that though yeah me neither I mean how how are you going to spend resources to to um to sort of remaster a game. Only to have it as a limited release, you know. So it doesn't it doesn't yeah. make sense to me. I mean, it's yeah, perfect. It's right on time for um, the holidays. Know, for, yeah, for the holiday season. So you know, they 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 put it out at a good time, but still, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know. Yeah. Maybe 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 that's their their marketing. It, it's a holiday special type deal, like a um, you know September through March type. I don't know. The, the like I said, the only reason why I think they they would do this is to possibly potentially maximize profits yeah tr- drive for it. drive up the uh the, the want for it yeah because if they if people know that's limited or or an end date they're they're more likely more keen to get it uh because they know that they can't get any, anywhere else you know it's kind of funny uh, uh kind of it, it kind of brings up to my attention like, like almost like, like a comparison there is a limited quote limited run with the uh, backstreet boys concert and um, obviously, I, I wouldn't. Uh, me and my wife wanted to go see it, and because it was limited, quote, I, I, I'll explain why I'm, I'm quotating it. But it was limited for the, that first six months, and because of the demand for it and high for it, uh, every single day was sold out. Like within a year or two, they came back, and now it's like they're now they're now like a resident in Las Vegas. Mm. And I feel like they, they're going to take that same approach with this game. See how much the demand is, how much is sold for. If if it's like super successful i'm sure they're going to bring it back they, they, they have to bring it back i want to i want to piggyback on that point a little bit if if it's going to be physical release only i'm pretty sure it's also going to be digitally released right did I, it say physical only i don't know i don't I know was, because I, because if it was physical only um the the chances of it getting bought and then reselling on ebay would would become a problem because yeah, people would agreed. just yeah like buy a whole bunch of them and then when when it goes off off the market, people will resell them for like double, triple the price. So that creates like a problem in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a marketing scheme because I, I've what's kind of interesting about Nintendo and the way they've recently been doing their marketing is try to limit how many consoles they sell. Like for example, the uh, the SNS minis and stuff like that. How they limited those, and the, the third party would you know try to upscale those costs. Um, I think they're just kind of do- doing that approach as well. E- even with the amiibos in certain regards as well, mm. how they have limited amiibos, um, just to kind of drive up the sale and hype for it, and then w- before it's completely gone. So I'm I'm definitely seeing like a trend there. Now, what's actually a newer trend uh, is the new Mario Kart game is actually could be using real life toy cars as more of like an AR version, like almost like a webcam version. Uh, using AR technology, and I thought that was a really cool concept. And so, from the from the uh, from the uh, screenshot you see here, you you, you kind of see like almost like a uh, back version of one of your your racing cars racing with potentially someone else, like a live person in a, in a course you set up in uh, your house. So that's really cool concept. Ensure that we never leave our homes again. Nintendo is making a <laughs> Mario Kart game featuring actual toys that you can race around your house. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit is an AR game that lets you race real toys in your living room. The physical kart responds to boosts in-game and in the real world. Stop when hit with an item and can be affected in different ways depending on the race. Players play skates to create a custom course layout in their home, where the only limit is their imagination. That is really cool. So, uh, I, dude, like, if we had this as, as kids, dude, we have so much fun, dude. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, especially now, like especially like as kids, you you tend to be more imaginative, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. like turn turn your entire room into like a whole like crazy race uh, race course. Yeah, or something. yeah, imagine that. Like you have like if you thought like uh, Rainbow Road was a long course, uh, like 
as kids, we can probably make a long, long course around the house. Yeah. I don't know if they showed any like gameplay for this, though. I'd really like to see it in, in action. Um, in, in a way, it just kind of sounds like my, okay, my first impression of it being, you know, me being the skeptic that I am, um, it sounds gimmicky. There might be more problems with it inherently. Mm hmm. Like what kind of problems do you think uh, you, do you anticipate? Um, I don't know, like like this just responsiveness of like the software and stuff like that, and uh, and how it you know reacts and interacts with like the um. With in the... a way, in a way, it's kind of like have, having a drone because uh, obviously, um, I have a drone for those that may not know, and um, like they they I pretty much controlled the drone using the joysticks and my phone connected to the application, mm. and I don't see any lag with that technology. So if they use that, that, that same technology with this, you're using your phone as a controller, I, I'm sure the response time is going to be pretty top-notch, I think. I don't think there's going to be any issues, me personally, mm. using the technology. I hope so, though, because it's a, it's a really interesting idea. Um, Nintendo's really good with like thinking outside the box in terms of, of gameplay. And obviously, mm -hmm. it doesn't always work out, but for the most part, they're... Um, they're very innovative, for they're sure. They're very innovative, yeah. So rolling to the next one is going to be a Wii U Switch port, Super Mario 3 World, um, basically coming to the Switch, featuring online and local co-op. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they're going to be featuring some new levels uh, called Bowser's Fury, as well as a couple of new Amiibos, the Cat Mario and Cat Peach, coming February of next year. It's pretty much the same game. Um, but it says here they're adding something called Bowser's Fury. Um, I don't know what that is. Um, from I looked around for more information regarding Bowser's Fury, but um, I didn't I didn't get anything uh, concrete. Mm -hmm. So I think it was more of a teaser, if anything. Yeah. So I don't I don't know whether that's going to be a multiplayer itself. Like you think you'll you'll be able to control Bowser or something? That would be cool. That would be cool. It's always cool to play as Bowser because Bowser, of course, is one of my favorite characters. So I'm always down to play Bowser. It kind of reminds me of like that one thing where um, it was that like four b four v one yeah experience yeah I was thinking that there's like a mode in in Halo I believe like I, was, I think it was called Juggernaut mode or something like that when it would be like five players or something like it mm -hmm. would be four players going up against one overpowered uh, character and that, that character of course being Bowser and then of course you have. Uh, Peach, Mario, Luigi, and Toad as your four players. Yeah, yeah. So it would be like four smaller uh, players versus one sh bigger, stronger player. So I'll be down for that. Yeah, that sounds kind of cool. I don't know if they... I think they did that for like a Mario party, though. You know, it's Yeah, they did. It's all, it, but I think it's going to be a full-fledged game just like that. So that'd be kind of cool if, if they go that route. That we're thinking, at least. Mm. All righty. So moving into the next one. Here's an interesting game. Mario another battle royale another battle royale <laughs> all right so let's read the article real quick here exclusive to nintendo switch online members and available only for a limited time which seems to be Again. like again which seems again. to be like the, the the theme of this entire thing super mario bros 35 will allow you and 34 other people to battle it out in a race to the finish according to the nintendo enemies defeated will be sent to other players courses but also works the other way around. Players can activate special items to try and outpace their opponents because everything, including Mario, is a battle royale game nowadays. So here, Nintendo's mm -hmm. taking advantage of the whole battle royale thing, as if we needed another battle royale. You know, mm -hmm. like the recent mm -hmm. craze nowadays is uh, Fall Guys, if you want to consider yep. that a battle royale. And now Mario seems to be getting in on it. So based on this, <clears throat> um. I guess it's not a battle royale in the traditional sense. From what I'm getting from this article, it's like it's it's more like a Fall Guys, you know, race to the finish line type deal. Yeah, it's it's more like it's like a level. You go into a level, but you're you're just by yourself, and you're you're just racing to finish the level along with 34 other people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, and according to this, uh, whenever time you kill an enemy there, um, it it gets transferred to another player. So it's like it sort of like slows them down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I guess like the winner is like whoever whoever manages to um, get to survive uh, at the end. Yeah. Um, is it, that... it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting concept because um, it's almost like a, the way like speedrunners uh, kind of have it all set up in Twitch where they have like four or five people playing like Mario 64 and try to get all 120 stars first out of everyone else. So mm -hmm. it's in a way, it's kind of like that. So they, they kind of took the idea that they had on Twitch to make their own battle royale game. 
Yeah. And it's interesting. It's also limited time only, though. What's what's going on with that? I don't know, dude. Nintendo. The, I think what it is, Nintendo doesn't think that it'll succeed. So they're kind of testing the waters, put their foot in the water type of deal. And if it is successful, like like we talked about with the other um, limited edition stuff, is um, they're going to like like extend it somehow. Mm-hmm. That's my opinion, though. To be honest, I think this will be successful. Like uh, this seems like something that will be very fun to play. Um, it, it we don't know if it's free though. Like if it's free to play a battle royale. Uh, they haven't talked about pricing wise, or we or, or we have to play a, a price for it. Well, all they mention is it being exclusive Nintendo Switch Online. Okay, so we'll definitely uh, keep you posted when we ha- when we get more details. They also announced Super Mario All Stars Return. Now I mentioned Super Mario All Stars. Um, yeah, you did during the uh, the the game and watch uh, the game and watch one. Um, it says here: Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers: The Lost Level, Super Mario Brothers Two, Super Mario Brothers Three uh, will be available on the Switch in a re-release of the classic Super Mario All Star. But um, it's only a port, though, so it's not a remaster. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what it sounds like. And so, uh, for for fans of uh, Super Mario All Stars, there you go. In addition to the slew of new games, Nintendo is also celebrating the 30th anniversary of Super Mario with a bunch of in-game events and Mario-themed crossovers. To start, mm-hmm. there's an official pin set players can earn by doing things like taking Mario quizzes, raising in, racing in Mario Kart Tour, and of course buying the games. Between September 8th and 22, Mario Kart to- Tour will feature new racers like Mario and Donkey Kong Jr. as they appeared in the original Super Mario Kart on the SNES. Super Mario Maker 2 will be getting a special 35th anniversary themed Ninji speedrun courses. Super Mario Bros. Ultimate and Splatoon will host events, a Super Mario Fighters tournament, and a Super Mario themed Splatterfest in the coming months. Finally, in March of next year, Animal Crossing New Horizons will get a new set of Super Mario furniture. The month-long celebration ultimately wraps up on March 31st, 2021. So it's it's definitely a good... A good time to be um, like a Nintendo fan, like a hardcore Nintendo fan, because they they seem to be doing like a lot of crossovers right now. And uh, lastly, here during this victory lap, Mario will be getting his face plastered all over the place. Nintendo announced Puma RS Dreamer Super Mario 64 basketball shoes. Show the will... picture. Show the picture. Nintendo Puma crossover with Super Mario Brothers sneakers. Mm. Um, obviously, it's like uh, blue and red themed. Yep. Um. Just in time for the and, series' 35th anniversary, Puma is about to release an official Super Mario Brothers shoe in a version of the company's RS Streamer silhouette with a very Mario Brothers color scheme. Is it limited? I would assume it's limited. It has. Yeah, they, they've yet to be officially announced, but they're already up on Foot Locker's Australian site with a release date of September 4th. Um, I'm guessing it will be. I, I don't see why not. I mean, that, that's like sort of like the theme nowadays, right? With uh, limited editions. Yeah. So, yeah. And what's- What's funny is that by, by the time this video airs, it might already be sold out. But pretty much, guys, that, that concludes the Nintendo Direct Mario theme event. So overall, what do you, what do you think about this? Somewhat disappointing because um, um, I feel like it's, it's mostly just like remasters and re-releases. Um, I don't think anything... No, no, nothing new, right? Nothing new? Nothing new or interesting really um, popped up. Like, imagine if they released, like, Galaxy 3 or something, or yeah. Sunshine 2, or... Or Odyssey 2, know, or something. Something something like that, yeah, yeah. So I'm very curious why they're, they're, they're limiting it to certain months. Um, but I guess there's a marketing scheme to that. Um, but uh, overall, I thought the, the, the actual event was pretty cool, uh, especially Mar- Mario fans around the world. Um, but um, I'm very curious. For me, I'm, I'm mostly ha- anticipating like the um, the AR Mario Kart mm. thing. That, that that seems like a very promising in my eyes. Uh, and of course, the um, Super Mario 3D All Stars is uh, something I'm de- definitely hyped to download in my Switch. All right, guys, rolling to tell's tidbits now. But before we get started, a word from our sponsors, which is us, but more specifically our Twitch channel. We do live stream on our Twitch every Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Um, we're currently working on a couple of new series. Uh, the big one right now currently is Tell Me Why. And we're also planning a October Horror Fest uh, month where we're going to be showcasing a lot of horror games um, that we'll either do individually or together, depending on the game. And uh, 
we'll have a poll eventually in our Discord. So we'll have a link in, for our Discord to follow us. And uh, maybe like nom nominate some games that you guys want us to play. You can always leave comments down below as well of what horror games you want us to play for Horror October Month. So the first article here is um, an some more Nintendo-related news. Uh, looks like Nintendo is allowing can cancellations for digital games for pre-orders, but unfortunately, it's only available in Japan, and it looks like it's only for now. Um, more details on that, link in the description for the article. For those who are mar big Marvel fans, unfortunately, the news broke out that Chadwick Boseman did pass away from stage 4 colon cancer. Uh, there's some tributes uh, for certain games, uh, specifically here, Fortnite, uh, on their latest Marvel patch. Uh, looks like they're adding a Black Panther statue in remembrance of Chadwick Boseman. So, uh, speaking of um, Marvel Avengers, they're also looking at um, uh, potentially a, a DLC for Black Panther. Um, in uh we don't know the release date for it but once we find more information we'll definitely keep you posted on that announcement and as a final fantasy news looks like chris chronicles remastered which also came out a couple of days ago i think uh this week um but it looks like it didn't fix some of the issues that were originally plaguing it from the original release uh more details on the article down below and some happy news, looks like Fall Guys, uh, the, the contest officially ended with a combined donation of $1 million, a joint force between G2 Esports, Ninja, Aim Labs, and Mr. Beast himself. And the charity will go towards special effects. In PUBG news, looks like the game itself has been banned in India due to cybersecurity concerns over Chinese smartphone apps. And this is just a wave of bannings that's happening over across different Chinese-related smartphone maps. In PS5-related news, um, uh, looks like there is no backwards compatibility and no support for PS3, PS2, or PS1 games. Um, this was kind of confirmed before during the initial announcements, but it looks like it's definitely concrete right now. In the Starfield-related news, looks like Bethesda VP has exciting teases for the eventual Starfield gameplay reveal. Unfortunately, we don't have a date of when the announcement will be coming, but everyone knows that it is indeed coming. So once we find more details, we'll definitely keep you posted. All right, the final two articles, uh, it's kind of related to each other. Basically, Ron Patterson's movie, Tenant, um, looks like AMC is going to be reopening most U.S. theaters in time for its release. And some sad news, though, for Ron Patterson, uh, the Batman Holt Productions, yet again, but this time because Ron Patterson himself reportedly tests positive for COVID-19. So hopefully a speed recovery for him. And that pretty much concludes Tal's tidbits. Obviously, all the news that I talked about will be in the description down for you to check out. And also, be, uh, and also don't forget to follow us on Twitch and uh, put your uh, votes in for our horror month in October. Alrighty, so moving into the next article here, we're going to cover the Tokyo Game Show 2020 lineup. Now, um, just like... All the gaming showcases for this year, everything had to be canceled uh, because of COVID-related reasons. And of course, this being uh, one of them, um, it's, uh, moved, it's become a, a completely online thing. So it's going to be like a four-day event, which yes. starts at September 24th till September 27th. Obviously, the big day will be the 24th, but there are going to be some other stuff, like, like more like behind the scenes, talking with developers and stuff like that on the other days. Um, and I think it's on a Thursday. So we'll try to cover that on our YouTube channel. We do our live stream, of, like live reaction of it, if possible, uh, during the actual event. So they, they already released the lineup. So we're going to go over it real quickly and um, mm -hmm. you know see if there's anything interesting. It's actually going to be the Xbox Tokyo Game Show Showcase, uh, yeah. which is uh, kind of interesting. I think that's like the next um, Xbox-related showcase um to to come out right i mean there isn't any there isn't like a new one like between now and then right uh as far as we know i don't think so like but i i thought it was going to be like in the middle of august but it looks like they pushed it back and combined it with the tokyo game show here yeah um so the rumor has it is that they're going to be showcasing more about the xbox series s which is the the miniature version of the the full xbox series s yes or the full version of the xbox series x um yeah but, which uh, I, I believe they didn't cover in the last one but uh, they will be covering it for, no. the, for this one yeah 
We, yeah, we we assume so. Yes, and hopefully too. Like because the rumor has it is that it's going to be coming out in November. So I would hope that they will talk about prices and official release date on that conference because it's getting to the point where like we got to know. And it's the same thing with Sony as well. So we're 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 looking at the, you know saying Xbox has to show it, but uh, the rumor has it that they're going to be the first ones to release it. And then Sony's going to release theirs after after Microsoft does. Yeah. So after the Xbox Tokyo Game Show Showcase, um, you have a Square Enix panel. Yes. Um, now, I believe, I don't know if you want to talk about it right now, but I believe that there are rumors of Final Fantasy 16. Yeah, there was a tweet that was, uh, I think, leaked or like deleted. I, 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 don't, I don't have the article in front of me. But um, people are talking about that. That might be a thing. But there was also another potential like uh, discussion piece with the FF Seven Part Two as well. Mm. Uh, that that's also something that's some. There's also something that people are very interested in to like to know when the uh, Part Two of FF Seven is coming out. But I don't know. Uh, like, do you think it's better to release a new title FF Sixteen, or they should should they really focus all their resources to like? FF7 Part 2. Uh, they have two separate teams um, taking care of each project. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's true. They didn't give any um, any details on uh, on Square Enix yet or, or what they're going to present, but um, we're hoping some, it's like one of those two. And some other games I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they show or maybe potentially do is another near game, like, a, like another near autonomous game. Um, I, I'm hoping they have, they'll have something from Platinum Games. Um, for that, uh, some other potential ones is maybe they'll have some more Kingdom Hearts stuff. I would assume. Mm. Um, yeah, maybe some more information on Melody and Memories, which uh, recently uh, they 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 recently released a trailer for. Yeah, probably. So, anything else that you, you could think of? Um, maybe some Final Fantasy fourteen re- related stuff. Um, what, they... what 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 if they like boom an FF eight remake? Oh my god, an <laughs> FF eight remake would make my year. Oh my god! But I, 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 I really doubt it, though. But yeah, but and of course, the last thing on the list here is Lightning Games. Three brand new indie titles presented by Lightning Games: Hardcore Mecha Hack and Anno Mutation M. They miss out on yeah. the precious game development stories and latest gameplay de- demos. I know they they showed showcased that during one of the conferences we show we 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 like reacted to, but we we didn't go into a full discussion piece on that. Mm. Um, but. Uh, just a quick summary, though, for the rest of the days, it's pretty much uh, like smaller developers like SoftBank. Um, obviously, Atlas and uh, yeah. are not small companies, but they're also kind of, they're, they're also having their own little presentation on the the following day as well. As Sega yeah. combined. Yeah, a lot of these they're they're saying it's like a lot of Chinese developers too. Yep, and I think Tencent Games is going to have their own conference on the twenty sixth. Um, as well as uh, uh, Kyo Ten- Ten- Tensmo games. Well, there's a Cyberpunk 2077 Nightwire. Um, as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a Konami Info Show. There's a Koei Tecmo game show. Yeah, and, yeah, and as you mentioned, there's a Tencent uh, presentation here. Mm-hmm. And I believe on the last day, we have uh, some more Koei Tecmo. Dynasty Warriors 20th Anniversary live stream. Mm-hmm. We have uh, Konami here. Not familiar with this one. Uh, Momotaro Densetsu. Impact. Uh, yeah, that, that's the. I, I think we showed. I think we showed that game before, um, in, in a live reaction. I thought. I, I, actually, yeah, the guess you get shit impact. Yeah, that that was, that was one of the games I'm actually, I'm actually excited for. Um, so hopefully we'll see more on that. Yeah. Um, but on top of that, they're also going to be doing a Japan Game Awards 2020 as well. Mm-hmm. So they'll be, they'll be handing out awards throughout the uh, the weekend. All right, guys. Uh, our final big discussion piece today is the controversy revolving around Madden 21 here. Um, the big article that we're pu- we're looking at right now is uh, basically Madden 21 is now the worst user reviewed game on Metacritic. And for obvious reasons, um, the big one here, obviously, for those that may not know, is that NFL has a exclusivity deal. Well, actually, EA specifically has an exclusivity deal with NFL in terms of having simulated games. 
Yeah. And I believe it's it's like a five, maybe six year deal, and they just recently signed yeah. it as well. Yeah, so this is the first of that five years with that ten to six year mm -hmm. if sales are good. Um that was kind of like the caveat to, to extend it additional year. Um, but according to this article, it looks like, uh, the, it, it was, it was released on, I believe on the 31st of August. Um, and according to this, PlayStation 4 users has blasted the game down to a 0 0.3 rating based on more than 2,500 reviews. They have this new mode called the yard, which is basically like a franchise game, but using old, like ultimate teams and cards. So you have to like... Every every player has their own individual card, whether it be a um, a rookie card to a, like a legendary epic card, and obviously you have to pay money or grind your way to get that epic card to get the best team to win in this yard mode. Um, and so the game is flooded with microtransactions, as we mentioned, and uh, some of the modes that we 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 mentioned before in previous installments is like the creative character mode. Um, where you basically create your own character, but the some of the faces, um, if you ever ever watch Angry Joe and his rants on the the amount of faces featured for his skin tone is very limited, and for him specifically, he mentioned that only four more were added for his skin tone. So, and what's even crazier is the fact that two of those faces look exactly the same. And another another big thing that um, they mentioned as well is the lack of attention to detail where you can see previous assets used from the previous games. And so obviously if you if you ever look at the the character models for the crowd, it looks look, it looks like it was never like revamped or added for um you know to to add that realistic look to it. There's still buggy like like clipping stuff between characters during collisions. Um and there's there's just a bunch of like Areas that they could have like really fixed on, but from what we see from gameplay, it was just a copy and paste. Yeah. Now, with with that being said, uh, Talos had mentioned it earlier, but um, fans are calling for the NFL to drop EA after this uh, horrible reception that this game uh, received. Um, so we've talked about it before. How um, like the way EA handles its sports games? Um, it's it's sort of lazy and undercooked, right? Um. Right now they have a monopoly with simulated football, so like there is no one else that can do it, you know. Right, so right. like, I guess their their idea is because they have exclusive deal, why should they innovate? And but at the same time, that that's just not right for the consumer. Of course, we're going to backlash against it. Exactly. That's and that's exactly the point here. It's um, whenever time something someone or something has a monopoly on something, um, the quality of it, the quality of it goes down because you're not competing against anybody, right? Mm -hmm, so definitely. So it's something that they've, they've always just been doing, um, you know, like just porting, like each new iteration of, of Madden um, is just pretty much like a, like, a, like a slightly updated port of the last one, you know, like roster changes. Maybe they might mm -hmm. add like a new mode or two, but sometimes the graphics, you know, still look the same. Yeah, like, like if you look at the graphics, like, like in phase value between today's to the previous, there is no, if the, 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 the graphic leap, it looks identical. As Talos mentioned earlier, um, the NFL did sign a five-year deal with uh, EA, and they're still, um, I think this is like their first year into it. Um, now players are calling for, for the NFL to drop the exclusivity deal with EA. Do um, you think um, it'll actually happen, though? Um, because it's tough to say, because like, like in terms of NFL... Their their business, so I would imagine all they care about is how much money it makes. Um, so if, if the money starts falling, then of course they'll put it to question. But uh, if sales are still good and people are still doing those microtransactions, buying those cards, buying those packs, um, all those different like currencies in the game, in game currencies that there are people buying, like to NFL's eyes, it's making money and thus successful. So but I don't know. No, but that's but as a consumer, as a consumer, if if if, uh, if if NFL sees that they can also be the good person and drop it, or at least give them a warning to EA that if this happens again, then you know, kind of kind of put it on blast, then that that can also affect it as well. So it it kind of depends on how 
NFL wants to play it. It says here, it's still a minority of Madden players. Each annual Madden release tends to top the sales of its launch month. So people are still buying the games. Yeah, so it is. So going by what you said earlier, um, NFL is going to see this as a, as a success. So probably they're not, they're not going to change what they're doing. They're just going to keep it up. Keep, uh, they're just going to keep doing what they're doing because they're, they're obviously making money off of it. Yeah, and, and that's an unfortunate state of mind, but like that's just how business works in some regards, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, the, the best thing that we can do as a consumer is, is keep, keep dropping those comments, uh, show some kind of awareness, uh, bring, bring forth uh, you know, the, the, great, the greater mindset, and hopefully someone in the NFL, someone big enough, uh, like commissioners out there from the NFL can, can see that and m- make some kind of stand. But as of right now, it's just one of those things where it might just be status quo. All righty, that's it for the news for now. Thank you guys for watching. And stay tuned. We'll try to keep you guys updated on developing stories. And as usual, if you enjoyed the video, you can always support us by liking and subscribing. And uh, comment down below, what are your thoughts on the uh, Madden 2021 controversy? You think the NFL should um, remove its exclusivity deal with EA? Uh, in the terms of gaming, we do also stream in our own Twitch channel. We do stream there every Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. So if you guys want to hang out and chill with us, link in the description. This is Studley signing out. See you guys later. All right, later, guys.